And then last problem um, is probably the most straightforward problem that I'm ever going to give you. Um, it's going to be a beam. It might be a cantilever beam like this that, that is attached to a wall, or it might be a pin and roller beam. All right. So if it is attached to the wall, you cannot forget about this moment, M-A, and I'll call this A-Y. It has A-Y and M-A. Excuse me, it has A-Y and M-A. I have no calculations here. But, but, but this is important. Let me, I wish I had something. Y'all do this with me. Help me out here. Uh, how would you solve for those? Well, let's sum the forces in Y. So this would be negative 30 pointed straight down uh, minus. All right. So I think I had a couple of complaints. I remember last semester, we didn't do too many uh, distributed loads like this, but that's from statics. Um, I think you can handle these distributed loads. What I like to do for these distributed loads is just think of it as a triangle on top of a uniform rectangular distributed load. That uniform rectangular distributed load would be 12, right, four by two, and it would be right at the middle. Um, but this triangular distributed load, uh, let's see, has a height of eight, a base of three, uh, but then half, right, triangle, one half base times height, so I guess it would also be 12. Uh, and it would be triangular distributed loads are actually a third closer to the taller side. All right, so anyway, summing the forces in Y. Negative 30 minus 12 minus 12 plus AY equals zero. Uh, so yes, I've got AY 54 kilonewtons. That's what I've got right here. And then summing the moments. Uh, first, I would have MA. Um, but then this 30 is acting 1.5. You see that? This is 30, and it's acting 1.5 away, creating a negative rotation about A. Uh, this blue 12 is acting uh, 11, let's see, 10 plus a third. It's closer to the taller side. That would also be a clockwise negative rotation. And then the other 12 would be 11.5. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, because it would be in the middle of this three. Sum of the moments equals zero. All right. But I do know that this should equal 315. Not sure if these should be kilonewtons. These should be kilonewtons, correct? So I've got newtons written here, uh, kilonewton meters. And AY is 54. So, yeah, I mean, I know I tell you you need to be able to do that fast, um, but to make a mistake, it's going to – mess up, you know, your shear and moment diagram. So do it fast and do it accurate and then you'll be, you'll be great. Okay, so you got the statics. But here's the main thing though, here's the main thing. A wall has a moment. You've got to draw a moment and solve for a moment at a wall right there. As opposed to a pin and roller, pin and roller don't have moments at the pin and roller, okay? All right, so what would our shear diagram look like? What would our shear diagram look like? Well, I'll start at zero, and then what's the first thing that I immediately encounter is 54 up. So I would go up to 54 and label that point for me, 54. All right, then I start walking along, and what do I feel? I feel this distributed load. Now, now we, we replace the distributed load with that 30 right at the middle, but that was for the statics portion of it. Um, we need to go back. It's a distributed load. It's not 30 
immediately right there at the middle. It's a distributed 10 over 3. Uh, so it's getting pushed down little by little by little. Um, that 30, that, that is how far it gets pushed down from 0 to, to 3. So it gets pushed down to, what, 24. How did it get there? Uh, linear, right? Linear because a uniform distributed load <clears throat> becomes a linear shear. Also because the loading is a slope of these. It has a slope of 10 down, 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 that constant slope of 10 down. Then, and, and here's sometimes this is the hardest part. If there's nothing there, then it's, it's perfectly horizontal. If there's nothing there, it's perfectly horizontal. Here we are at 24. Then it gets this distributed load that pushes it down by, looky there, 24. Which is a good thing, so I need to get back to zero. How did it get pushed down? It wasn't linear. Um, the loading is the slope. So first it's getting pushed down by 12, but then it kind of eases up. It's still getting pushed down, but it's getting pushed down to four. <clears throat> I'm gonna exaggerate this, but it's this type of, curvature <laughs> right there. Maybe I didn't exaggerate enough, but it's curved upward concavity right there. All right. And so on your test, label it if, um, if you don't think it's clear to me. Like this is linear. Linear. 54, 24. 24, 0. Um, I would put units out there somewhere. All right. Now, the moment. This will be the fun part. The moment. I'm looking for three things when I'm drawing my moment diagram. First, I'm looking for a concentrated moment that immediately pushes it up or down. And that's what I've got right at the beginning. I've got a concentrated moment of <coughs> 315. And the way I memorize it is clockwise pushes my moment diagram up. This one is counterclockwise. It pushes it down from zero down to negative 315. So that's the first thing is I, I have a moment at the wall of 315 counterclockwise. So it gets pushed down by 315. All right, now <clears throat> I'm looking at areas, areas under the shear, and V is the slope of M. So the area under the shear, from here to here, this is a positive area because it's above the axis. And so I would say this delta M changes by that pink area. That pink area would be, uh, I like to think of it as a trapezoid. It has an average height. It has an average height of 54 plus 24 divided by two, and it has a base of three. Uh, somebody help me out with that. Uh, 100 and something, something, something that I'll tell you this point So whatever this, it increases by, I can't do this, say what? 117. 117. Then this math doesn't work out if that's correct. Because uh, this is what I've got. I've got 156 right here. All right, because so I've got 156. What is that? 150, 160, 198. 
That wouldn't be right. What's the difference between 315 and 156? We all get 159 for this. Okay. Possibility this maybe maybe it's not 315. Okay. All right. How it's supposed to work out. How it's supposed to work out. So is this from last test? I'm not sure what, what went wrong with last test. Um, this, right, the, the M changes by the area under the curve. So whatever that area is under that curve would bring it up because it's positive. So it would bring it up to some negative value right there. So yeah, something's off here, but it brings it up some value. Now, did it go straight? Did it curve? Did it curve? V is a slope of M. V is a slope of M. And so it would, it would have this curvature right here. And almost all of our moment diagrams are going to have that curvature because if the distributed load is pushing down, then the slope is going to be getting more negative. And so this sort of curvature, first it started with a slope of 54. It ended with a slope of 24. Started with a slope of... Uh, 54 ended with a slope of 24. All right, then the next section is that green rectangle right there. That green rectangle, so the delta M, and I wouldn't trust me, but 7 by 24 uh, would bring this right here. I've got 30. I don't know if that's correct or not. And it would be linear, right? That would be linear right there. That would be linear. Oops. Okay, and here's the tricky part. Here's the tricky part. Well, it's not exactly tricky. Um, you know that it should come back to zero you know that it should come back to zero. So I wouldn't even do, I wouldn't even try attempt to find that area right there. Um, it's going to come back to zero. What type of curvature will it have? Well, it starts with a slope of 24. It ends with a slope of not zero actually, but it ends, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes. It ends with a, with a, sorry, this portion starts with a slope of 24. It ends with a slope of zero. And so it, it has this curvature right there, concave down, has that curvature right there. Now, the problem is I told you that uh, the area under an x squared is one third base times height, but that's only true if that x squared shape starts or ends with a slope of zero. Uh, this does not start or end with a slope of zero. It starts with a slope of 12. It ends with a slope of four. So do, <clears throat> you, you wouldn't be able to do one third base times height uh, to find that area to double check that you get to zero. I really like for you to double check that you get to zero. Um, and it's a good, it's very helpful when you can double check that you get to zero. But sometimes, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how we could double check and make sure we get 30. Um, um, generally, we might just have to write an equation for that V, uh, integrate it to find an equation for our M. Um, but the one third and two thirds be base times height is the area under an x squared graph that starts or ends with a slope of zero. Is that? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to test you on equations, but that is definitely another method for these problems. Sometimes it's helpful, especially maybe this section, it may have been more helpful to write an equation 
Um, I'm not going to ask for an equation for your shearing moment, but if you do it that way, that would be perfectly fine if you did it that way. Break it up into sections and write equations for each section. Okay? Okay.